millions of people from all over the world, from different religions and different cultures love him. Who is he? He's a man that people have differed about. Is he God? Is he the son of God? Is he God the son? Is he a prophet and messenger of God? Or was he a mythological figure in history? Was he a real man? These are questions that we will discuss from the Islamic perspective. 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to the world in the shape of a human in very difficult circumstances. The entire land was controlled by the Romans, who were in conflict with the Jews, who were looking for a new leader and master. Hence, Jesus appeared and said about himself, I am the Son of God. This was an outrageous statement for people who wondered how can this person claim that he is the Son of God. They found his allegations very suspicious, but Jesus proved himself to be true by doing acts that only God can do. He did things beyond the human ability. His biggest miracle was resurrecting the dead. This miracle is considered the foundation of our belief. Lately, we celebrated Easter. This is the day when Jesus died and the day of his resurrection. This is the summary of our main belief that Jesus died for us and he carried all our sin when he was crucified. As Muslims, we love, respect and believe in all of the prophets and messengers of Allah. We believe in all of them because they came with one message, to worship Allah. We believe that the essence of Islam, submission to one God, was revealed to all of them. But that over time, man-made alterations occurred in those religions and in those scriptures after those prophets and messengers were gone. And this is why we find differences in their belief. One of those points that we find a difference between religions such as Judaism, Christianity and Islam is the status of and the position of the religion regarding Jesus, peace be upon him. In Judaism, they have taken an extreme that they reject Jesus, peace be upon him. They consider him to be a false prophet and an illegitimate child. May Allah protect us from such a thing. Yet, when we read in the Bible about some acts of Jesus, we can see that they support the Jewish view. For example, when the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, O woman, what have you to do with me? John chapter 2 verse 3. How come a prophet or half God talks to his mother in that inappropriate way? Whereas the Quran presents a virtuous view of a prophet chosen by God. And we can read in the Quran how prophet Jesus talks about his mother and made me dutiful to my mother, and he has not made me a wretched tyrant. Miriam, chapter 19, verse 32. And in Christianity, they have taken another extreme. They have said that Jesus is actually the Son of God or God the Son, and he is divine and part of a trinity. But in Islam, we have taken a middle ground. We believe that Jesus, peace be upon him, is a righteous man. He's a noble prophet and messenger of Allah, and he is someone who was free from sin and was an example and role model for the nation that he was sent to. It is surprising how the consecutive Bibles support the Islamic view. We read in the Quran, the Messiah has said, O children of Israel, worship Allah, my Lord, and your Lord, Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5, verse 72. Then we read in the Gospel of John, a man who has told you the truth that I heard, from God, chapter 8, verse 40. We also read in the Quran, the Messiah, son of Mary, was not but a messenger. Other messengers have passed on before him, and his mother was a supporter of truth. They used to eat food. al Ma'adah, chapter 5, verse 75. We read in the Gospel of Matthew, early in the morning, as Jesus was on his way back to the city, he was hungry, chapter 21, verse 18. And we read in the Quran, never would the Messiah disdain to be a servant of Allah, nor would the angels near to him. An Nisa, chapter 4, verse 172. Then we read in the Gospel of Luke concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. Chapter 24, verse 19.
The question whether Jesus was a god or human has been controversial for hundreds of years. Here, in the Protestant Church, we mainly believe that he was both. He was fully human and fully God at the same time. The humanity and divinity of Jesus are not separable and are not mixed as well. In my point of view, I say that Jesus was the spirit of the Lord in the shape of a human. It's a unique individual case that's not applicable to other humans. The most important part of any religion is the concept of God. In Islam, we believe that there is no deity and no God that is worthy of being worshipped except Allah, the one that created all things and the one that sent all prophets and messengers. But in Christianity, for example, we find that the concept of Trinity can be difficult to understand. We may even ask sometimes uh, experts who have studied in seminary, who have studied in a Bible college, and yet they would have some difficulty to understand and say that it's something which you must take on faith. But if we look closely in the Quran, we believe that one of the greatest miracles that Jesus, peace be upon him, ever performed was that he spoke in the cradle right after birth. And one of the first words that came out of his mouth was that, I am the slave of Allah. And this is why Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, even warned Muslims. He said, do not overly praise me as the Christians have done to Jesus, the son of Mary, but say that I am the slave of Allah and his messenger. The mission of Jesus, peace be upon him, on earth, was not to be a God to be worshipped. He was a person chosen by God Almighty to clarify to the people how to worship God Almighty. This is the main difference between the belief of Christians and that of Muslims. So at this point, Muslims and Christians separate and take different views. From an Islamic view, the mission of Jesus, peace be upon him, is that he is a servant of God Almighty, sent by him to teach people that they should worship God alone. For God is one and has no partners. This was mentioned several times in the holy books of Christian denominations. Salvation in Islam, we believe, is by believing in and following the prophets and messengers. So if we say that Jesus, peace be upon him, is a savior, he's a savior for those that believed in him and followed him during his time. We believe that those who follow his true message and the spirit of his message are those that will be saved. And today, the spirit of his message can be found in the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The Muslims are actually more worthy of Jesus, peace be upon him, than all others. For this to become clear, we have to analyze four main points. Number one, the prophets of Allah are all related to one another. Number two, the only accepted religious way of life is Islam, submission to one God. Number three, Jesus, peace be upon him, was but a humble messenger and prophet of Allah. And number four, Jesus, peace be upon him, distances himself from the slander and unjustified claims that Christians have made after him. Through my observations, I think that most Christians don't pay attention to other religions. The older generation, who are in their 50s till 70s of age, might have some knowledge about their religion and they deal with people based on the teachings of their holy books. But as for the following generation and the generations that will follow them, they're expected to totally drift from Christianity because sadly, they look at everything in their lives from a commercial or materialistic point of view. They're interested only in the material aspects how to earn money, how to build a house, how to buy an expensive car. In Islam, we believe that Jesus, peace be upon him, was not crucified. We believe that in fact, someone else was crucified in Jesus, peace be upon him's place, and it was made to appear that Jesus, peace be upon him, was crucified. But we believe that Allah has saved the messenger, Jesus, peace be upon him, and that he was raised up to the skies and that he will come in a second coming. Now in Christianity, it's believed that he was killed and crucified and it's mentioned that he said, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? But we believe that these words are not appropriate for a believer to say. They are not appropriate for a messenger of God to say, much less as Christians have claimed for the Son of God or God himself to say. 
to believe that he was abandoned by God and not accept his fate or whatever had been decreed to him. So this is evidence for us that Jesus, peace be upon him himself, was not crucified. Now, similar to Christian belief, we believe that Jesus, peace be upon him, will come again. But in the second coming, we believe that Jesus, peace be upon him, will follow the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And he will be a leader that will call people once again to worship only one God and to submit themselves in all of their uh, practices and in all of their way of life to the teachings that Allah has revealed. I would like to invite all of our viewers that are not Muslim yet. I invite each and every one of you to think and to reflect on what we have said today and to ask yourself if truly we love Jesus peace be upon him then it's incumbent upon us to follow him and it's incumbent upon us to follow his teachings and his practices this is a true sign of our love for him and to be one of those who are truly going to be his followers and with him in paradise in the hereafter then we have to follow what it ha what has been stated in the bible and that is that there is only one god and that that god the creator of all things is the only one that we should worship the only one that we should submit ourselves to and by doing so we will be true followers of jesus peace be upon him and true followers of all of the prophets and messengers so i invite each and every one of you to submit to allah and to become Muslim so that we can achieve success and happiness in this life and more importantly in the hereafter. قال سبحانك ما يكون لي أن أقول ما ليس لي بحق إن كنت قلته فقد علمته تعلم ما في نفسي ولا أعلم ما في نفسك إنك أنت علام ما قلت لهم إلا ما أمرتني به أن اعبدوا الله ربي وربكم وكنت عليهم شهيدا ما دمت فيهم فلما توفيتني كنت أنت الرقيب عليهم وأنت على كل شيء شهيد